Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Lisa, and as you guys can see from the title of this video, I'm going to be going through my weight loss journey and how I did this through intermittent fasting. So this video was highly requested by a lot of people in my vlog comments or also through my Instagram stories. So if you guys are new here, I mentioned this a couple times through my vlogs. I also mentioned it on Instagram if you follow me on there. Basically, I lost about 15 pounds, I would say the most, and or three jean sizes. So I went from a size 26 all the way down to a 23. So I have actually since then gained a little bit of weight back, but anyway. This video has been highly requested and the only reason why it took me this long to make it is honestly because I procrastinated making this video since I was a little bit scared of internet police because obviously I am not a nutritionist. I didn't even really take science in university. Let this be the disclaimer that I am not an expert. Please still do your research. I'm just gonna talk about a little bit of the concept and what I've been doing. So please take everything with a grain of salt and also everybody's bodies are really different so your body might react to this diet differently. Yeah, I think it's called a diet. Just like how my body reacts differently to other types of diets. So make sure you still do your research and find the right strategy for you. This video is actually going to be segmented into three different parts. The first part is going to be me talking about intermittent fasting, why I chose to do it and what it is, etc. The second part is going to be me talking about what I ate during intermittent fasting. Lastly, I'm going to be talking about the exercise portion. So without any further ado, let's get this video started. Okay, so to start off the video, I wanted to briefly touch upon what intermittent fasting is in case you guys didn't know. Intermittent fasting, the concept is pretty simple. Basically, you eating within a six to eight hour window and you get to pick which one you wanna do. So for example, if you pick the time frame of eight hours and you wanna start eating at 12 p.m., you can eat, but only within that eight hour window. So 12 p.m. all the way to 8 p.m. And then any time that is outside of that time frame, you cannot eat anything that has calories. So you can consume any zero calorie stuff such as water, coffee, and tea. These are the three things that are generally accepted. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about why I chose intermittent fasting before I went on this diet. The one thing that was extremely important to me was picking a sustainable option because throughout my life, my weight fluctuates very easily. If you guys don't know me in person, I have the type of body where if I work out, I'll lose it kind of easily. But also if I start eating, a lot and not exercising, I'll also gain it back very easily. Even throughout first year, I gained 20 pounds, then I lost it all, and then I gained it all back. I was so tired of fluctuating. I just want to stick to something that would allow me to last at least more sustainably. Even though, you know, right now I actually gained back a little bit, but at least it's not all the way back to 20 pounds or something like that. So the first reason why I chose intermittent fasting was I wanted a sustainable option. And the second reason is because compared to some other diets, Diets, it didn't restrict you as much regarding what to eat. I'm not saying that you should now go and eat McDonald's and eat super unhealthy, but I feel like compared to some other diets, like I am very much not a salad girl. I cannot eat a salad to save my life. I don't like salads. And for me to have to eat super clean is unrealistic. It would make me really, really unhappy because I use food as a way to socialize and interact with my friends, interact with my family. And I just think that, you know, having to eat really cleanly, although that's very good, and I'm not saying to eat unhealthy, but I'm saying that to do that 100% of the time, I was being very honest with myself and I knew that that was unsustainable. So, I ended up choosing intermittent fasting because for me, it seemed more realistic to control when I eat instead of always what I eat. That being said, I also chose the time frame of eight hours rather than six hours because once again, going with the whole realistic thing, I wanted to pick something that was a little bit more sustainable. In terms of time frame, I actually chose the time frame of 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And I know that a lot of people actually choose 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. because for them, 
a lot of people already tend to skip breakfast and then they'll just eat lunch and that way when they have like a later dinner with their friends to socialize it makes the most sense the only reason why i didn't choose 12 to 8 because from a social perspective makes the most sense and also if you're already someone that doesn't eat breakfast 12 to 8 just sounds like a perfect time however for me i am a huge breakfast person the minute i wake up i get really really hungry so i can't wait until 12 p.m that's the first thing and then the second thing is because for me this is gonna get a little tmi but i just feel like when i don't eat breakfast i can't go to the bathroom like i don't know also because I'm actually a huge believer in Chinese medicine and like acupuncture and all of that So I know that my doctor my Chinese doctor or my acupuncturist He still really really encourages breakfast. So 10 a.m. Was the latest I was able to go that was realistic for me and I will have to stop eating at 6 p.m Which honestly for me is fine and this all started when I was in quarantine So that being said it was a lot easier because we were already not meeting up with friends it didn't make the task harder but now when I do go out and eat with my friends if it's after 6 p.m. it honestly just depends on the occasion if it's a really really special occasion I will cheat and I will eat after 6 p.m. but if it's you know just like a regular day or whatever it's nobody's birthday I'll usually just show up either eat a little beforehand and when I'm there I'll just drink something but I probably will not participate in the eating I know it sounds like such a party pooper thing but honestly guys you do what you gotta do you know what I mean and also I do want to Mentioned, I was a little bit more strict in the very 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 beginning when this whole journey started than I am now Hence why I have gained back a little bit of weight This is what I'm telling you if I just kind of stray a little bit That's when things go backwards. So I need to start disciplining myself again But anyway before I go into the diet I wanted to talk a little bit about my stats if you guys are watching this video or if you guys follow me on Instagram I know that I give off the illusion that I'm a really small person and like why do you need to lose weight? Weight because I get this comment so often and to me honestly it's kind of for lack of a better word annoying only because number one like I think I give off the vibe that I'm really small and I'm skinny and I don't need to lose weight because I wear a lot of loose clothing I don't wear clothing that really really hugs my body hence why I think a lot of people don't know until I tell them that I have like really tiny boobs and like a really huge stomach people just don't understand that because of the way I dress myself because I dress my myself to combat my insecurities so I make sure that I'm dressing to accentuate what I'm proud of and what would make me confident so I would never wear a bodysuit because to wear a bodysuit and look good in a bodysuit requires you to have a curvier body like bigger boobs and a tiny waist which is what I have the exact opposite of at my heaviest so this was during quarantine and I was at the heaviest and this is what made me decide to start intermittent fasting I believe I was 120 or like 121 I'm only five foot one so I'm gonna try to find pictures and show you guys if you guys can see but basically during this time I was 120 pounds I decided to finally do something about it at this point we've been quarantining so the weight gain came really really quickly because I stopped walking and I was always at home for me like I started really really showing my clothes were starting to really not fit anymore and I just wanted to get a little bit smaller so anyway that being said I would say I was still quite healthy I think at that point it was more a cosmetic thing so this is ultimately what got me to start my dieting and exercising etc so basically at the very very end and how I got to where I was I ended up being I believe 107 at the lightest so about 13 pounds I don't think I saw myself at 105 yet so not quite yet 15 pounds but that was the most I've lost I think present day because of Thanksgiving and all of that I have already gained back a little bit so I think right now I'm at 110 111 but I'm okay with this weight to be honest I think I was just unhappy at the 120 range right now what I am now I'm honestly quite fine with it so that was pretty much why I chose to go the intermittent fasting route and now I'm going to talk about what I was doing when it comes to dieting when it came to dieting once again this is going to be quite unconventional I feel like a lot of people tend to eat their bigger meals during dinner time but for me like I said earlier in this video I'm a 
huge breakfast person. For me, the short story is that I always ate my biggest meals in the start of my day and I had my smallest meals at the very, very end of my day. So think about what a normal person would do, but in reverse, I feel like most people eat a really small meal for breakfast and a really big dinner. But what I did was opposite because I'm more of a breakfast person. And also because for me, I would have just come out of a fast and not eat for a really long time. So for me, when I wake up in the morning, I would be so hungry. I remember when I started, I was really, really hungry. Eventually I actually got used to it. But in the very beginning, I just had to eat a bigger meal because I I was just fasting. I didn't eat breakfast food as my very first meal. My very first meal, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, and maybe you guys think it's weird, and maybe this is a Taiwanese thing. Sorry, the reason why I say it's a Taiwanese thing is because in Taiwan, it's very normal for you to wake up and eat like a bowl of noodle soup. It's just normal, and I think a lot of Asian cultures are like that too, which is like so weird to Westerners, I think. But for me, like the first meal, I would say the most typical meal that I started making for myself was rice, broccoli and salmon so i would bake a salmon and i wouldn't even season it that much i wouldn't even sear it on a pan i think that actually makes it a little bit unhealthy so i would just bake a salmon for about 20 minutes have a little bit of oil add soy sauce that was my only seasoning i really really limited my seasoning too and then i ate broccoli with absolutely no seasoning i would use the soy sauce from my salmon to eat my broccoli and then i would eat rice whether it's brown or white and to me honestly guys that meal was delicious. I'm not even saying that because I'm just like, oh, it's healthier or whatever, but actually I genuinely love salmon so much. You guys probably know if you follow me on Instagram, I'm always eating salmon sashimi, but if I'm not eating raw salmon, I'm eating baked salmon. So I eat my baked salmon, I eat my broccoli, which I also love. Like I love broccoli, Brussels sprouts, any type of vegetables, honestly, and rice. So I would eat that and I just like drizzle some soy sauce over the whole thing. And that was my first meal. For me, like I do eat out and this allows me to eat out whenever I want to because whenever I'm home and whenever you guys are not watching me on Instagram put stories of food this is my typical first meal honestly I love this meal so much if I don't have salmon I would actually replace it with two eggs so that would be my first meal of the day for the rest of the day I feel like I get pretty busy with work because at around 10 a.m. I start eating but I would work until 5 p.m. this was back in Toronto and I honestly would kind of forget about food and when work is finally over over, that's when I would pick up another thing to eat and then once again this is where I feel like made the biggest difference because number one I would eat such a big portion from breakfast that I barely feel hungry throughout the day even by the time dinner came around I feel like I wouldn't be extremely hungry so for dinner one of two things I feel like when I ate a equally big meal those are the days I feel like I'm not really seeing much results in the intermittent fasting but during my cutting phase meaning I feel like you can just eat like a regular meal or an equally as big meal for your last meal right before the cutoff but that would be more of maintaining your current weight at the time when I was losing weight for my last meal I would eat something that was more similar to breakfast so I would eat a lot of fruit I would eat a lot of I guess like maybe just one toast or something like that so this is exactly what I mean by I would flip breakfast and dinner what people usually eat for breakfast versus what people usually eat for dinner I would reverse that and I I found on those days it was the days that made the biggest difference another thing that I did and I'm not saying that this is healthy by any means I genuinely think that if you are someone who is very prone to being you know very mentally challenged by the weight loss or just being very impacted by this and a borderline anorexia you definitely should not do this however what I did just to kind of track my progress and instead of demotivating me it actually did motivate me a little bit in the morning when I wake up I would weigh myself just to see what I'm at this is like before I put any water or anything into my body I just see where I'm at and I always wear the same thing I just wear my t-shirt and my underwear so I know every time I step on the sale it's always the same at night I would weigh myself again and I actually made a chart of my weight so I would have the date and I would have the morning weight and I would have the night weight and once again this was not at all to make me lose weight this was genuinely just for observation just to see how things were going and stuff and I will actually kind of like do a screen recording of the entire time and my entire progress I will put it on here and as you guys can see it did fluctuate and I did go up and down and on some days I was consistent but it also did take a really really long time so please by any means like don't 
don't look at this as like a fast track to losing like 10 pounds. It took me since April or May, I can't remember, but it took a really long time. And only until August did I share that I lost about 10 or 13 pounds. Definitely this takes progress and it takes a lot of patience. If you are willing to give it a try, honestly, at least this diet for me in particular really worked out. So yeah, that's pretty much like in terms of food, what I would eat on a regular day. And when I say regular day is like a day when I'm not really seeing people. And we had a lot of those obviously during quarantine. So I think that was another reason why it was really easy for me to stick with my diet plan. Ever since I came back to Vancouver, I've been going out to eat a lot and I've been seeing a lot of friends and that's made this diet a lot harder. Hence why I think I've gained it back a little bit, even though I allow myself to eat at a restaurant and stuff because I'm still intermittent fasting. Sometimes it's difficult because of the time or sometimes you just end up eating an equally big meal or even bigger during the dinner time. I just want to say that it was only easy for me because of quarantine actually. Anyway, that's pretty much the diet portion. And then lastly, I wanted to talk about the exercise. I absolutely hate exercising and I'm not afraid to say that. I also suck at exercising. I just like cannot be bothered. If I didn't have to exercise a day in this world, I would not. And I think this is why God did not give me the fastest metabolism. Like I'm talking about those girls who have a bikini body and they eat like crap. I think God did not give me this because he would know I would eat like crap and not do anything about it. So I think I'm given this body to force me to exercise. Anyway, once again, my exercise strategy, it is nothing intense. In fact, I think my biggest piece of advice for you guys is picking something that will stick. I think my biggest fear was doing all this work and then having to go all the way back to 120 again and then having to start over. And it's just, it's so much work. Like it's easier to maintain something rather than constantly gaining it and losing it and stuff like that. For me, even when it came to exercise, I asked myself, Lisa, would you actually go to the gym every single day or do all these exercises? And the answer is no. I ended up picking a strategy that worked for me, which is doing Chloe Ting. And I think I mentioned this in a previous favorites video, but the reason why Chloe Ting really, really is effective to me is because of a few reasons. Number one, her exercises are only 10 minutes. If you give me an exercise that is 30 minutes and you tell me right off the bat it's 30 minutes, I'm gonna be like, heck no. Like that is so long. It seems so daunting. But when you tell me 10 minutes, I'm like, I have 10 minutes. What is 10 minutes? 10 minutes is nothing basically. You almost look at the 10 minutes as though it's a joke. You're like, that's nothing, I can do this. It's so little that it forces you to do it and I do it every single day because of this mentality because I'm just like, what is 10 minutes? It is actually nothing. So I end up getting my ass up to do something because I'm like, it's not gonna take any time. Within the 10 minutes, you're dying and you feel like giving up but then while you're already doing it, you're like, okay, it has to be less than 10 minutes now so you force yourself to finish it. So that being said, that's kind of why I decided to choose Chloe Tang. The other reason is because all her exercises are quite simple, require almost no equipment and you feel a lot. I remember doing some of her arm exercises and all of them were just like this, just like doing all these really simple exercises and the next day, my entire upper body would be in so much pain off of doing no equipment and 10 minutes. Anyway, for me, it was really, really effective. I think it was a really great long-term strategy because I was able to do it every single day and not give up because of how short it was rather than saying to yourself like, oh, let's exercise three times a week for an hour because I would just be like, okay, I'm not gonna do that. Once again, I'm not saying that this exercise strategy is right or is for everybody. I'm just saying, that this is the exercise strategy for me and why it worked on me because I had to mentally convince myself that it was pretty much nothing. That was pretty much the whole gist of how I lost my weight. It was honestly not too, too much. I no longer wanted to try exercises that were extremely excruciating and took up a long time or fad diets or eating super, super clean because honestly, I know those were all really unrealistic to me. I've done those before. I've lost weight because of them before but it never, never lasted for me. So I am really hoping that this diet really lasts. I will keep you guys updated and you guys are honestly gonna see what my body looks like in like a month or two or even a year and you guys can be like, okay, yeah, she gained it all.
fall back. Or you can be like, wow, she still looks the same. Hence why this is longevity. I don't know. Hopefully this is going to last really long. But yeah, if you guys have any questions that I didn't answer, please leave a comment down below. Once again, please still do your research. Don't use this video as the holy grail to your diet plan because I am not an expert. Please still do your research and still read up on intermittent fasting. So that was pretty much it for the video today and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!